you very much for the opportunity to present here. We changed the title a little bit. This is the final title. It's Language Moods and Improving Project Performance. So I'm here uh, to present this paper that uh, David Long was my co-author and he uh, couldn't be here for health uh, issues. So I'm um, lucky to be here and be, be able to represent both of us. Okay, so um, this paper uh, starts, uh, the, I'm gonna give you a little bit of the background. The idea here is that um, I'm not gonna uh, make a lot of arguments, but I think we all agree that construction industry needs to improve productivity. Uh, and there's been uh, uh, improvements in productivity through the implementation of lean construction uh, tools and methods. However, we think uh, there's much more uh, available and we could in be get inspired by the use of language uh, action and also uh, by the use of, uh, by paying more attention to the effects of moods in projects. So this paper uh, really um, acknowledges that construction teams struggle with communicating better and usually do not pay attention to moods. And, 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 and we, we did a literature review to understand uh, what are the connections, what's the literature saying on, in relationship with language, uh, positive moods, and productivity. So the questions are, what research has connected language, linguistic action and lean to increase project performance? And what are the potentials, potential new opportunities for connecting linguistic action and moods to, to increase project performance? So um, some background, what do I mean by linguistic action? Some of you may be aware of uh, the work of Fernando Flores that's based on uh, Austin and Searle. So, uh, this, um, so this is coming from a book, uh, Conversations for Action. And what it says that there are, um, there are um, there are ways of decoding conversations and we could, uh, decode conversations into six categories of speech acts. And just to give you a flavor, there's uh, the declaration uh, type of speech in which if somebody would, uh, needs authority and it opens new possibilities. So the idea is that um, somebody in a position, like when you get married, the priest will declare you married and he has the authority, so it changes your future because you're, you're now married, your status change, you know? So that's the point of that declaration. If somebody else does the same thing that doesn't have the power, it doesn't work, right? So it's really dependent on authority. Um, the assessments are made to open up new possibilities and, and are futuristic. So usually we think about those, those are, uh, uh, traditionally or, or more commonly understood as opinions, okay? It's cold or it's uh, warm outside, uh, so I'm going to choose what to wear, okay? I'm thinking about the future. This is going to affect uh, what's my impression of, of how the future will be. Then we have uh, requests and offers in which uh, those two go kind of together and you have... Uh, somebody that makes a request and some, somebody that uh, can, you can make either a request or an offer and, and you need two people, two, two speakers and it, it creates action, it produces something. So I request a couple of water and then as a result I get, a, a, sorry, a cup of water, no? Something more concrete. Um, then we have promises that are uh, commitments to 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 say um, to do something, and 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 then the last one is an assertion, which is most commonly understood as uh, stating a fact. Um, so this uh, this requires the commitment to provide evidence when you say something that it's uh, I am. Uh, 1.73 uh, centimeter 
uh, meters tall, I can prove that. I can measure myself and see that this is a true statement. And if I'm lying, you guys are going to know. Uh, so those are the difference in the speech acts. Um, so why this is relevant for uh, construction projects? Why this is uh, important? Um, well, just the awareness of these different distinctions will help us decode conversations and get less, um, less confusion. So for example, if the boss said in our construction project, we will probably not finish foundation concrete this week. Uh, what is that? Is that an assessment or an assertion? Is that a fact or an opinion? So this is something that it's in the future, so it's something that it's uh, an, an assessment, but what happened if the people that work for this person think it's actually a fact? Probably they're gonna take action and they are not gonna be prepared and they're gonna assume that this is a fact, so therefore I'm not gonna prepare for the next task. So this has, has some implications, and if I'm not uh, curious enough or I'm not, uh, I, ha I don't have the trust, the enough trust to explore those questions further and, and discovering if this is a fact or an opinion, I'm not going to pursue that conversation further. Uh, another, um, another thing that can happen is like uh, when the boss said, said we're, not, we're not on schedule, and, and that's... Um, a declaration, but it uh, can be confused by a request, and somebody can do something about it, and maybe that action wasn't coordinated with, the, uh, with a particular request, and maybe there's actions taken that are not, uh, I mean, somebody can bring more people to the site, and maybe that's not the solution that was needed. So there are more, confu it creates confusions if there's no sheer understanding of what what are we talking? So another uh, very typical in construction projects are incomplete requests. And, and also, uh, so for example, um, we need a bigger crane. Yeah, we need a bigger crane. Cool. And nobody does anything or there's no discussion and so forth. So that's uh, things that happen over and over at different stages of, of, of conversations while talking about uh, delivering a particular pro uh, project. So this is uh, the request promise loop. I think most of you are familiar with it. This is, uh, it gives you more nuances on how, I mean, there are so many ways in which a request promise cycle can go wrong. Uh, there's got, there's can be uh, a bad preparation from the requester it could be a bad negotiation, bad negotiation. It could be uh, that the action, the execution went wrong, or even that, even that if everything went great and you execute what was asked, you never let the, the customer know, so the cycle is not closed. So there are different uh, ways of uh, having break, breakdowns in conversations, and, and those, uh, uh, can can be learned. So so why is it uh, how to learn speak chats and be more um, more um, aware of these distinctions and these differences? So this is not um, not easy to explain, not easy to learn. In it's not a concept that I can just. I mean, it's not that I just explain you and now you're going to be able to distinguish those. It's something that requires a, the development of new skills and practice. So it requires self-awareness, self-observation, and, um, and, and it actually also requires ontological uh, coaching. So it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So, um, okay, so what what moods have to do with all this? So there's this uh, very good book I recommend you guys if you haven't read it, uh, Learning to Learn and the Navigation of Moods by Gloria Flores. And, and it's based on observations from uh, teams that play a multiplayer uh, online 
uh, role-playing game. Uh, I, I had the fortune to go through this course in 2015. So what you are, uh, what they are doing is observing teams in, a, in how they interact and how they go for quests in, in a control environment. So you're being, while you're giving a quest with your team, you have to communicate to get to that uh, particular quest. And, and, and you will start to self uh, uh, observe yourself and start to uh, realize what speech acts you're using, which ones you're not using. Uh, so you're not making requests when you need to make requests. You're not uh, declaring what the goal are. I mean, there's so many different things that, that you need to start to pay attention at the same time. So it requires time. This course is like a fourth, fourth month. So at least, uh, and because you need to change the way you're, you're um, thinking about communication, it takes time. Just. Uh, so in this book, Gloria uh, explains what she has learned from the observation of these teams. Uh, so she makes distinctions of, about what moods are. And, um, and this is influenced by uh, German philosopher Martin Heidegger and also by uh, UC Berkeley professor Hubert Dreyfus uh, from um, the Department of Philosophy too. So what they, what, the way that they define moods, it's that uh, moods are, um, are already there when you're aware of them. So you get to, today you are already in a mood. And there's a mood of the conference, there's a mood of the country, there's the mood of the world, there's the mood of your family. There's so many moods, layers of moods going on uh, that affects you even before you notice them. And, and, the, and, and moods affect the possibilities that you see for future actions. Um, uh, they are contagious and invisible. This is also something that's been uh, proven with other research. Like uh, if you get nervous about something, you sort of get that trespass to other people. Uh, same if you're happy. Uh, so, uh, and the other thing is that moods can be cultivated. So it's not only that you are there, you can actually do something to change it. Uh, moods are not emotion. Uh, emotions are about a particular thing. Moods are more general. Um, and, and the other thing is that hu it's, they recognize that human beings are historical beings. So you have your mood, it's based on what you have lived, what's your historical heritage, and, and, and it's with you uh, uh, there. You, I mean, there's, um, this is very relevant for construction. When, when we start a project, a, a new project, the first time that a company wants to do a collaborative project, an IPD project, for example, and, and they need people to speak up, to collaborate, but their particular, let's think about one superintendent that his whole career has been uh, uh, said, or has been told, uh, do not speak up, don't, don't tell me what the problems are, if you raise your voice, you get screwed, and et cetera, et cetera. You cannot expect that because now we're signing a, a collaborative agreement, that history is going to be for, for, forgotten. Right, so that history comes with the person, and it's been it's present in the moment too. Okay. Um, so why speech ad, acts and moods are important? Uh, so the connection with moods and speak ad, it's speech acts is that moods are triggered by automatic assessments, um, and. And again, as, as we said, if we're not aware of what an assessment is and we keep confusing facts from opinions, assessments, and assertions, we are, there's no way we can uh, actually understand what's happening to us. Um, so an, an example of one assessment 
and how this limit your possibilities is it Gloria made a very good job and explaining and giving a lot of examples of this especially towards how people learn uh, so an example is I'm not very good of an assessment I'm not very good at computers I can learn the, the computer skills needed for this project so my it's not that I say that I think that uh, in, in, in my mind and and that uh, puts me that uh, belief, I mean, because I, I don't know that's just an assessment. Uh, I believe that's the fact, a fact. So then that puts me in a mood of resignation. I'm not going to be able to learn, so I'm not going to even try. Okay? So, um, and, and that, and assessments have standards and have uh, also uh, the historical background, etc. Okay, this is a list of negative moods. I know it's a lot. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the idea here is to um, make examples of where things that we see in constructions, in construction pro teams. So, um, one, uh, I mean, the moods that are more frequent I, when, when the team is not working well, I mean, it's either resignation, there's nothing I can do, I mean, these people will never do the job well, so I'm not gonna, not gonna even try. And, and there's frustration also. Um, I, have, uh, I have tried everything and these guys don't get it, and so I'm not gonna keep trying. Or um, there's also a lot of confusion going on, uh, especially, I mean, this is very, um, when confusion, confusion is a negative mood, so I have seen, uh, I have observed this many times, especially it's dangerous when owners are confused and, and in, 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 in roles in which they don't feel safe to say, you know what, I don't understand this, so I'm confused, but they have the assessment that it's their fault and they don't want to clarify anything and they don't ask questions that should be asking, and then when they get the result, uh, they are not happy with it. So um, there's um, a, a lot of different, this is just examples of moods. There are many more, okay? Um, Okay, and what are positive moods? Positive moods are wonder, are, uh, so that's what uh, uh, opens possibilities to explore new things. So I wonder what will happen if we do this and that, why don't we try, right? Um, serenity, acceptance, uh, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with this project, but I know we will figure it out together. So this sort of uh, moods, help to to see new possibilities and to actually work better as a team and then ambition resolution confidence and trust so uh, and a specific example um, so it, it moods are again are, are in the commitment and in all the speech acts that we we use also when, when we make a commitment we're already influenced by the moods that we are in so, um, so if uh, there's a mood of trust uh, and there's a promise, uh, a commitment to finish the foundation concrete requires the use of the speech check promise, and, and there may be another request needed that is uh, ordering concrete from a provider in which you need to use the request speech check. So if you're in a mood of trust, uh, you, you're gonna say, well, I think this, this can be done in three, three days, that's an assessment that you're making, and then I'll promise to finish this by Wednesday, for example. So that's, I'm making a promise based on an assessment that I'm making. And, and on the other hand, I know the concrete provided will be on time, I trust it, so I order it one day before. On the other hand, if I have the same speech acts, but I do not trust, I'm in a mood of distrust, I'm going to say, oh, I think it can be done in three days, but since I do not think the steel trade will be done, I will promise to finish by Friday instead of Wednesday. And, um, and I do not know if the concrete provider will be on time, so I will order it three days later and I'm gonna call him the day before just to make sure. You know? So it's different actions that you make to, to have the same, the same promise. 
So the, yeah, what if we could cultivate moods? Uh, this, is, uh, this has been studied outside of language action. There's more um, research out there, and this is just a very, uh, uh, a study um, that shows that just by smiling, you have uh, like four, uh, like smiling for one minute, they did an experiment, they asked people to just smile, and then they produce a chemical reaction in their brain and their brain respond to it. So there are things that you can do. Uh, this is not the only way, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, again, Gloria gives some hints on what's the, what do you, can you do to navigate moods. So first of all, practice be aware of them and your mood and the moods of the others. Uh, explore assessment trigger uh, that triggered the moods. So, okay, I'm resigned. What assessment I'm making that makes me resign? And, and what are the standards that I'm using? Uh, and what are the, um, what can I do? What, what conversations can I have to, to get out of here? And, and also, on the other hand, cultiv actively cultivate um, positive moods. So what we did also was to look at uh, what the Lean Construction community has been uh, talking about. Uh, I mean, this is not new. Uh, it, there are papers that has, have talked about language action before, has have touched on moods before. Uh, yeah, you cannot see this table. I'm not going to go through it, but uh, it's on the paper. Um, and, and what we found was that there's um, uh, yeah, it has been discussed in this conference before and in also other um, venues, but uh, most of the papers tend to talk about this and go to the last planner system as, and specifically to just the, the moment in which you make promises uh, to be measured by PPC. So it's, uh, there's a lot more than, than, I mean, it can be useful for many other things. Um, uh, there's been less said on moods and, and, and than what speech acts can do for us in the construction industry. Um, yeah, it, it, I, for me, I mean, while we think that it, it, the connection between language, mood, and productivity make intuitive sense, we're not actually actively teaching this or implementing it in construction projects. Um, and, and, and there's also, uh, uh, I mean, the recognition that this is not easy to do. There's a challenge. I mean, it, we're talking about changing habits here. So, um, yeah, the, the conclusions are, okay, we're not, um, we, we don't think the teams are aware of how they are influenced by their use of language and moods. Uh, there's literature that uh, indicates that shifting to positive moods, it's, uh, it's synonymous with better productivity. Um, there's uh, opportunities to uh, learning conversations for action and navigation of moods in the construction industry. And this, uh, in these three points, uh, in, in, in increasing sensibilities to differentiate speech acts in developing uh, skills for new conversations and also mood awareness and cultivation of positive moods. And uh, finally, uh, well, there's a lot of room for new research. Um, there's no, uh, we didn't find any quantitative measurement of uh, increase or, or improved in moods versus productivity or project performance in, in, with regards with time, um, uh, quality, et cetera. I mean, everything in the, the project performance. Um, the other question that we have is like, well, there are some trainings already there um, uh, available, but uh, is that effective for a construction project in which uh, you have um, reduced time and uh, if so, I mean, what type of training we need and how effective those trainings can be. Um, the other question is how better communication skills will support the implementation of lean practices 
and on the other hand, how lean practices support the improvement of moods. Um, and, and what other practices we can use to cultivate more positive moods. So uh, maybe should we teach Indian dancing? I don't know, <laughs> from yesterday we saw the facial expression and how they could actually uh, um, somehow control, not, not, I don't mean it in a, in a in, I mean, have somehow control their emotions or control their moods. I mean, the, the ability that the dancers have to do that, it's pretty amazing. And, and that also ask, uh, I mean, it makes me question, I mean, what, what's there, there's more to, to learn from Easter cultures also that we should be implementing in, 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 um, in construction. Um, all right, thank you so much.